Hi and welcome to 5-Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. In the frame of the statistical analysis of clinical trial data, descriptive statistics can indicate possible relationships between variables. To go a step further, it can be calculated whether there is a statistical correlation between these. A frequently used measurement is the correlation coefficient, also called product moment correlation. The correlation coefficient is a specific measure that quantifies the strength of a linear statistical relationship between two variables as well as its direction. There are several different measures for the degree of a correlation, depending on the type of data that is evaluated. They all range between minus 1 and 1. A coefficient of 0 indicates that there is no correlation between the two variables. Values between 0 and plus 1 indicate a positive correlation. So an increase in the first variable goes hand in hand with an increase of the second variable. Values between 0 and minus 1 on the other hand imply a negative correlation. The thresholds when a correlation can be considered important is always a matter of context. A strong relationship is often considered from 0 0.8. In general, we can state that the correlation coefficient increases with a degree of association between the two variables. Important to stress here is that the assumed relation when using correlation coefficients is indeed linear. If the relationship between the two variables would be rather exponential or U-shaped, for example, the correlation coefficient might show a low correlation, although a relationship between the two variables exists in reality. Most commonly used is the Spearman-Rank correlation coefficient. The advantage of the Spearman-Rank correlation is that it does not require any further assumptions about the distribution of the data, and it is applicable for data that is at least on an ordinal scale. It cannot, however, differentiate between dependent and independent variables, and it cannot, like mentioned before, capture nonlinear relationships between two variables. Let's look at some examples. A positive relation would be given, for example, when looking at the correlation between age and number of prescribed drugs. The causal connection here, of course, is the health state. The older the people get, the more diseases they have and therefore the more drugs are prescribed by the doctors. Another example would be the dependency of the quality of an ophthalmologic surgery and the number of operations the surgeon has performed. The more operations a surgeon is doing, the more experienced he becomes and the better will be the quality of the operation. An example for a negative correlation would be if we look at the visual acuity with ongoing age. The older the person, the worse becomes the visual acuity. Other examples are the blood sugar with the administration of insulin or the asthma condition of a person in relation to the activity level. It is very important to remember that a correlation between two variables does not imply a causal relationship between these. A third variable could be involved linking these two variables. Correlation of this kind are called spurious correlations. An experimental setup can show cause and effect or causation, but a correlation coefficient can only predict a relationship. Studies tend to overinterpret correlation coefficients, concluding causal assertions where only correlational evidence was shown. Furthermore, only a test can show if the correlation is statistically significant. Another interesting aspect of the correlation coefficient is that it can be used to evaluate how much of the variance or distribution of one variable can be explained by that of the other variable. For this we use the square of the correlation coefficient, also called the degree or coefficient of determination. For example, we have a correlation coefficient of 0.3. That means that 0.3 squared equals 0.09, so 9% of the overall occurring variance can be explained from the statistical perspective and the other 91% remain unexplained. So that is it for today. As you can see, the correlation coefficient can indicate relationships between variables, but to be sure, further aspects have to be evaluated. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.